a bit chilly in here today, man. Did you get them to turn the heating down? No, I did, actually. Yeah. I did. It was really hot last time we came yeah. here, so... <sighs> thought so. Hello and welcome to the GCN Show, where we keep you up to date with everything worth knowing in the world of cycling. And a lot of stuff that isn't, but we've just found funny. I think my left leg's a bit stronger, actually. Dan takes over Retro Corner and we've got some cutting edge tech news. And we've got Strava Club, Tweet of the Week, Caption of the Week and our new segment, Marginal Pains. And you may have noticed we're back at Mud Dog in Bristol because I've been doing a week of tapering before my first ever cyclocross race on the Sunday. Getting so hungry. Oh, good God. Oh, There's been a lot in the news over the last couple of years about a possible restructuring of the men's professional calendar and teams. There are a lot of big players in this business, but one of the more interesting ones a Project Avignon who recently rebranded themselves as Velon. And Cy si caught up with the CEO earlier this week to find out their plans. So here's Graham Bartlett. Well, it's a very exciting new venture amongst all the pro cycling teams that we've got on board at the moment. There's 11 of them. And what they've done is they've joined forces, combined their rights, and what they're looking to do is generate some new business in the sport by offering products to the fans and the race organisers that everybody wants. Well, we started off with new technology. You know, we were the group that put the cameras on the bikes for the Tour de Suisse. That was the first race that we did. But what it showed was there's a real appetite to bring that new technology to the sport and get inside it and show people just how fantastic it is. And what that did was it proved to us that if you want to do something new and different, you can't do it on your own. You've got to do it as a group. Well, that was a short part of a reasonably long chat that you had with Graham Sy. So what were your overall impressions of that project? Well, I think there's some things that, that us cycling fans can get really excited about. Although what I would say as a note of caution is that because cycling is so immensely complicated, that actually it's going to take a long time to implement any of these changes. I think the thing I'm going to watch with interest is uh, how the calendar pans out. And in 2017, the USA have got some quite radical changes proposed. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, well, if we lose any of the major races that we've currently got. Uh, so it's the heritage and the history of races that I'm kind of concerned about. But no, you know, uh, I think it's important that we look at change. Yeah, it's a difficult one. It's a sport so steeped in tradition. I love that part. But at the same time, I also like the idea of modernisation. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out over the next two or three years, I guess. Mm. Caption of the week now, and last week we had a photo brilliantly supplied by Matt, and built by Ben is the winner with this genius caption. Over the hill, but clearly not down it. Well done, built by Ben. Anyway, this week's photo comes to you from the Ghent 6, where a cat managed to get onto the track. Once again, I shall get you started. Anyway, mate, you're not going to make any, no. any reference to pussy, eh? No. I was, why? Just, just anything that's suitable. No. Things that comments like that. Not I'll leave it to you lot then. How about, I can't find the cat flap anywhere. <laughs> See? Oh, this is funny. <laughs> Where's the bloody cat flap? It was definitely funny when Matt said it. Okay, it's time to round up all of the action which took place in the cyclocross world at the weekend. On Saturday, it was the second round of the World Cup in the sand of Coxeda. And it was the youngster, 20-year-old Wout Van Aert, who dominated the race, quickly distancing his rivals and giving himself plenty of time to celebrate over the final lap of the race. Kevin Powers came in second, keeping the overall World Cup lead, with third place going to 19-year-old Mathieu van der Poel. And it's Santa Kant. We're not going to do that check this time. No, we'll just leave it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Santa Kant put in a massive push on the final lap of the women's race to take the victory ahead of Sabrina Stultons and Sophie de Burr. But it's de Burr that leads the overall standings ahead of Kant, who presumably can't. And at the Super Prestige, the following day in Frankenstein, former British champion Nikki Harris led virtually from the start, bidding her compatriot Helen Wyman into second place, with Ellen Van Loy rounding out the podium. In the men's race, Lars van der Haar, back from illness, fought it out with Kevin Powers for much of the race. In fact, it came down to the very last lap, and it was only a mistake from van der Haar just before the horrendously muddy steep bank which they had to run up, which enabled Powers to get a gap which he continued to hold all the way to the finish line, telling that Fideas Tom Musen held on for third place. And the curse of the GCM Pro Bike continues. This week, we gave you Sven Lee's Trek Boon, and that meant that he didn't figure anywhere in the positions at all this weekend. No, it's not good, but it's a beginning. Like 
Yes, looks can be deceiving. This week's Retro Corner has actually been taken over by Dan Lloyd and his Techno Gym Cycle. Believe it or not, I'm actually the second oldest presenter on GCN. Anyway, my piece of retro tech is this old Techno Gym Spin Trainer. Now, many of you will remember that back in the 90s, they sponsored MG Techno Gym and they produced this for the riders to use at home and in laboratories to train. I first used one myself back in the 90s as well. My first ever coach used them to test riders using the Conconi ramp test, which I can still do on here today. You put your age in, 25, enter weight, 66. One of the amazing things is when you do up the gradient on 0% at the moment, it goes up to 9%. Gradually, it increases that resistance it genuinely feels very, very similar to the sort of resistance you would get when you're climbing up an Alpine Pyrenean or mountains in the Dolomites. Made a bit of an effort on there then. We've also got a degree of suspension here which allows the back wheel to just sort of bounce slightly up and down. The same thing here at the front forks. There's just a couple of elastomers there which allow the forks to move very slightly and it gives you that kind of a little bit more road-like feel where you've got a bit of movement as you're riding, but okay folks, thanks for joining me on this Retro Tech. Uh, Matt will be back next week, but if you would like me to continue doing Retro Tech, just like this video. On to transfer news now, and friend of the show and Strava addict Jack Haig has signed with Orica Greenwich. However, like Caleb Ewan this year, he'll start with them in August of 2015, and he'll start his full-time contract in 2016. And Chris Horner has a team, but we don't know which one it is yet. Although Baden Cook, his agent, has said it is a US squad. Any guesses, lads? Uh, I wonder whether it could either be Trek Factory Racing uh, or BMC. I think it's irrelevant. I just think it's great that, that older people are being given employment opportunities within cycling. Yeah, that always helps, Matt, doesn't it? Mm. Have you got your bus pass yet? Strava Club now, and once again, Steve Coglin has taken the distance total with a mighty impressive 1,208 kilometres, including an epic 425 kilometre ride. That, however, was only good enough for third place in the longest ride competition, which was actually taken by T. We think that might have been Tom Last, mm. very own Tom Last, because he was out of the office all week last week. But in the climbing competition, it was regular big hitter Brian Toon who posted an impressive 16,997 metres of elevation. Oh, we've got the self-nominated special mention of the week on Strava. In our comments section, it was Red Six who said his life changed on August of 2013 when he was about 90 pounds heavier and a sad, pathetic, fat man. After losing the weight, I bought a cheap bicycle and really took to it. I've only been cycling about three months, but I recently upgraded to a more proper bike. I'm doing long rides on the weekend, 50 to 80 miles, not every weekend, and riding to work 25 miles three to four days a week. Your videos have been very instrumental to all of this. Thank you very much. The information I've been able to gather from watching your entertaining clips has got me pedaling better and on a properly maintained bike. I've joined your Strava club. I'm Red Six on there. Good work, Aaron. And if you think you deserve a special mention for our Strava club or you've got a friend who does, please let us know in the comments section below this video. Component manufacturer SRAM has made this step up to title sponsorship of a cycling team in collaboration with Velocio Sports, the organisation that brought us Specialised Lululemon back in 2012. And despite their huge success, the future of the team was in jeopardy during this uncertain period. And they did lose some key riders, including Chantal Black, Evelyn, <laughs> including Chantal Small. Chantal Black, Carmen Small, and Evelyn Stevens. <laughs> I could do really? it all the time if you want. Thankfully though, despite that uncertainty, they did manage to hold on some really big name riders, including Lisa Brenauer, the World Time Trial Champion, Tiffany Cromwell and Trixie Warrack. I got Chantal Black right. Tech news this week comes from Matt's very good friend, Alberto Constor. Now, not wanting to shell out his own hard-earned cash on an actual arse saver or arse saver mudguard, he decided to make his own out of a team beat on. I did send uh, Bertie a quick text to see exactly how he did it, and as soon as I get this text translated, we'll let you know. Maybe we'll make a, a video of his instructions on how to do it so our viewers can see. Definitely. Make an ass saver like a pro. Oh, mm. oh no, it's like a ass. grand tour winner. Oh, God. Okay, we've had a great uptake for our brand new weekly competition, which is Find the Hidden Deliberate Mistake. So much so, in fact, that you've highlighted quite a few mistakes which 
weren't deliberate at all. Uh, anyway, winner this week is Born Pedaling. You said mistake of the week is Matt riding cyclocross. In fact, that is correct. It is deliberate. It certainly is a mistake. I'll tell you what, Born Pedaling, I'd like to see you try, pal. Whoa, that's Whoa. fighting talk. <laughs> Whoa. Now, should that be a bit lighter? I'll do that a bit lighter. Sinister, <laughs> no, if that's your, uh, if that's how you feel about it, Matt. <laughs> well, it's now two o'clock in the morning. We've got the very final event of this six-day event. Now, some of you may remember that last year we did a great report from the Ghent Six Day. And believe it or not, a full 12 months has passed since then. So this year's event finished on Sunday. They've all been drinking a lot. I've had at least eight mineral wards, mineral wards, mineral wards myself. I'm not sure what the others have been drinking. But if you're in the vicinity of a six day, especially the Ghent one, I thoroughly recommend it. You look like you're really getting into the spirit of things there. I had a great time, yeah, really good. Yeah. Anyway, this year really it was Mark Cavendish and Ilio Keisler that were the main attraction, but they finished a close second to the Belgian duo of Kenny Dicker Taylor and Jasper de Bois. In third place, it was Leif Lampeter and BMC youngster Sylvain Dillier. Club of the Week has been sent in by Isaac Ross and it's the Front Rangers Junior Cycling out of Colorado Springs. Both over 35 juniors, all of whom are 12 to 18 years old with the support of 13 coaches and a number of local and international sponsors. They've got multiple state champions and everyone is encouraged to train, race, improve and have fun. Uh, the Colorado Springs Front Rangers has changed my life and made a positive impact on many of the current and former teammates. Now, a few of you have been asking on the message, message boards, are they called message boards? No. A few of you have been asking in the comments below to uh, see some of my crashes set to classical music. So we've rustled up something for you. And a quick reminder, if any of you are in the Milton Keynes area in Great Britain this Sunday the 30th of November, that will be when I'm participating in my first ever cyclocross race in the elite category, not chaps, the vets, the elite. Comment of the week this week comes from Glenn Ryan, who says, when the lads make fun of Dan, he looks like he just got caught with a sphincter says what joke. What? Coming up on the channel this week, Monday, it's how to use a torque wrench, Tuesday. Welcome to the GCN Show. And on Wednesday, it's the sixth episode of Map Cyclocross series. This week, we teach him some key race skills. Yeah, what did you learn about your line choice today? That it wasn't very good. You right, Matt? Come on, Matt. You right? Yep. Foot out in the ruts. This is brutal. You have to be really good. Remember, Matt, wide feet, kind of waddle, and go for footprints that have already been made. Okay. And on Thursday, we show you our top five post-ride stretches. We were going to do 10, but uh, we just weren't flexible enough. It's still aching now, then. Friday is another GCN Does Science video. This time, we're testing whether or not it's more efficient to ride in the saddle or out of the saddle. And Saturday is the first part of the trilogy of Matt Stevens' profile. So long, we've had to split it into three, and the editors are still wading through much of the footage now. Now, one of the videos that I did get quite a lot of stick for was the top 10 ways to lose weight where I forgot to shut my front door. But I'm not gonna make the same mistake this time. Sunday's usual off the back. Are you doing it again? I don't know, it depends who wins. All right, one, two, three. You, you yeah, I win. What? That's not how you play. <laughs> you're like, you're like, what? That's I believe, paper. I believe my presenter video is also better than IMAX as well. Live from the red carpet, Welcome to the first annual GCN Awards. If you were looking to vote in our GCN Awards show poll last week, and I'm sorry it wasn't actually up, it took us a long time to decide who the contenders were, but it's up now, so head over there to vote for such things as Race of the Year, Rider of the Year, GCN Video of the Year, and the most important one, as the best cycling personality. I think I've decided who I'm going to vote for, you know. Who's that then? Well, He's, uh, he's a bit of a legend, actually, of the sport. Um, it's, it's really incredibly nice. talented. It's really um, nice. You know, he's quite old, actually. Oh, you know, I'm getting on a bit, been around. Uh, yeah. Jens yeah, Voigt. 
tweet of the week this week comes from Adrian, who said, Nothing like conquering my first mountain attempt. And he climbed 633 metres, well that's in old money, 2,077 feet, holding his lovely focus bike aloft in triumph. Yep, very well done, Adrian. Don't forget, all of you can contact us via the medium of Twitter, at GCN Tweets, at Real Stevens, at Cy underscore Richardson, right. and at Daniel Lloyd 1. Yeah, and normally we'll leave you with Extreme Corner, but this time it's an Extreme Trailer, a video we shot this week that if you want to see more of, you just have to like this video. Can you feel it? Kicking in? Oh, for sure. You should increase your heart rate on descent. Keeps you warm when it's very cold as well. Yeah. All the top pros do it. The poll for this year's award show is now live and you can find a link to that in the description below this channel or you can go via our other social networks, Twitter or Facebook. And if you want to know what the GCN award show looks like if you didn't catch last year's, then you can click on that up there and watch it. And in case you missed Dan's six day escapade from last year, click down here and to become a fan of GCN, click on one of us. <laughs>